good morning uh, welcome to ku padashala today i am speaking on a topic buddhist answer to the environmental pollution and sustainable development science and technology have made amazing advances in the history of mankind the discoveries in the field of electronics information technology transportation and the entertainment industry have helped in changing the world and making it wealthier day by day however all these technological achievements have also brought a number of negative aspects one of these problems is the environmental pollution which is threatening not only the advantages achieved by the technological development but also affecting millions of peoples living throughout the globe causing havoc and becoming a global issue of concern all the religions of the world have traditionally expressed some ethical concern for environment and its creatures they have accorded some moral significance to other creatures and proposed some ethical responsibilities on the part of human greed and destructiveness are condemned while restraint and protection are affirmed by most religious traditions this is also noted that some indian religions were highly honored over western religions for giving more stress for environmental protection indian religions in various ways influence or shape our attitude towards natural environment among the religions which taught for preservation and conservation of environment buddhism stands foremost with its uncompromising quest for justice right to conduct and non violence and with the spirit of universalism which pervades it buddhism offers a rich reservoir of conceptual material on all aspects of human condition buddhism treated human desires and, and the effects of the products of science and technology on our minds as the cause of environmental problems concepts of nature and environment which are seen in the doctrine of dependent origination of buddhism are similar to the concept of ecology when analyzed buddhist teachings it can be found that the root cause behind the violence and polluted mind filled with the greed hatred and delusion actually violence starts in mind a lot of teachings related to the elimination of violence and promotion of gender equality can be found in tripitakas of buddhism which consists of suddha pitaka vinaya pitaka and abhidhamma pitaka the theory of causation or pratitya samutpada a teachings of buddhism which also called 12 links of cause and effect in the four noble truths which is a basic reasoning system of buddhism that expresses insight into the universe as well as humanity to buddhism the relationship between people and nature is a symbolic relationship with the survival as well as development there are several reasons for environmental pollution but the greedy rush for economic growth is an one behind the increasing imbalance in future several reason environment submits have failed to persuade rich nations to share their capabilities with the poorer nations in order to solve the environmental problems the hypothesis of this uh, teaching uh, this uh, class is that in this respect uh, it is by following the teachings of buddhism humanity can escape from the destructive aspects of science and technology and long for a sustainable development as a religion buddhism contained satisfactory answer to the problem of environmental pollution as well as sustainable development buddhism proposes that everything in the universe is somehow connected therefore the very principle of biodiversity and symbiosis of nature and living things are primary in maintaining our world buddha followed a way of life that did not fall into the into either two extremes that is utter poverty and suffering on the one hand 
or accumulation and hoarding of wealth on the other. The early Buddhist scriptures contained the evidence of a very great sensitivity showed to the natural world. Buddha himself, as also his immediate disciples, lived very close to nature. He was born in an orchard, his mother holding on to the branch of a tree. He gained enlightenment at Bodhagaya, sitting under a pipal tree. He died in the sal tree grove of the mallas stretched out between the two sal trees. Buddhism advocated that people must learn how to behave towards their environment not only from instructions but also from their own experience, good or bad, and from the examples set to them by others in their society. It's a fact that environmental pollution is a problem of the modern age, unheard of and unsuspected during the time of Buddha. Nevertheless, as Buddhism is a full-fledged philosophy of reflecting all aspects of experience, it is possible to find enough material in the Buddhist literature to delineate the Buddhist attitude towards nature. According to Buddhist doctrine, individual actions have immediate consequences in the larger world. This cause and effect is called in Buddhism as karma of Buddhism. Buddha taught that the well-being of the all life on earth, not just a human, is important and equally valuable. Buddhist teachings require every person to consider right livelihood and the impact that would have on society as well as in the environment. As for the teachings of Buddhism, the environment refers to the total environment of humankind, biophysical and social, natural and anthropogenic, economic and cultural, with past, present and future. Buddhism teaches us that if man is to enjoy nature's benefits, he has primarily to lead a righteous life. Today's man's insensitive craving for all types of wants has made him to be more and more unrighteous. According to the theory of moral causation as taught in Buddhism, not only water but even other resources of the nature that are needed for man's survival can become hard to find unless they are mindfully utilized without destruction and waste. Man should neither try to subjugate nature or make her his slave, nor should be he blindly do any harm to her aesthetic aspects that are in plenty. According to Buddhism, nature is dynamic and everything changes in the nature and nothing remains static. When mankind is de demoralized through greed, famine is the natural outcome. When moral degeneration is due to ignorance, epidemic is the inevitable result. When hatred is the demoralizing force, then widespread violence is the ultimate outcome. Mankind has to depend on nature for his food, clothing, medicine and other requisites, but they seldom care for maintaining a harmonious relations with the nature. The ideal condition is that man must learn to satisfy his needs and not to feed his greed. The resources of the world, world are not unlimited, whereas man's greed knows no limits. Buddha promulgated the rule against going on a journey during the rainy season because of possible injury to worms and insects that come to the surface in wet weather. He stipulated cleanliness both in person and environment. He was very particular about selecting a silent atmosphere for constructing buildings and monasteries. Gautama Buddha, who lived in India approximately about 2,500 years ago, can be identified as the first environmentalist who introduced the concept of sustainable development. While the world leaders are now busy in organizing the Earth Summit in various places for suggesting a simple way for life, for preventing environmental pollution, Buddha suggested the principle even at a time 
when there was no threat on our mother earth unlike the principle of western philosophers buddhism never stressed that limited resources can be expanded to satisfy unlimited needs of the people buddhism teaches to control human disease through dana or charity or shila that means morality or self discipline and bhavana or meditation right livelihood is another eight noble practices found in the eightfold path preached by gautama buddha unlike many human centric western religions buddhism is eco centric hence buddhism always recognizes and respects diversity buddhism teaches us that if man is to enjoy nature's benefits he has to primarily lead a righteous life according to the theory of moral causation as taught in buddhism not only water and even other resources that are needed for man's survival can become hard to find unless they are mindfully utilized without destruction and waste according to buddha man should neither try to subjugate nature or make her his slave the dharma or dharma of buddhism has numerous values and principles that are correlated with the deep ecology buddhism focuses on the extinguishing of sufferings which is caused by attachment to anything through ignorance and greed to stop attachments buddhism provides the eightfold noble path of right understanding right motive or thoughts right speech right action right means of livelihood right effort right mindfulness and right concentration the buddhism has a respect for all beings and approaches them with compassion and loving kindness such as reverence for all life the blessings of buddhists often state may all beings be happy and may all beings be peaceful Buddhism is completely averse to the notion that nature and all created things exist for the benefit of mankind on the other hand mankind is part of the entire cosmic order but not a positive position of dominance Buddhism aimed at emancipation of all forms of sufferings the route to that emancipation is not the pursuit of power and possessions but very opposite the rejection of the pursuit of those materialistic goals which are so greatly imperiling in human future buddhism teaches that one does not have to traverse the length and breadth of the universe to gain knowledge of what is right or wrong all this knowledge is latent with oneself applying this to environmental protection what is required is an internal change of attitude there are three main characteristics of each worldly phenomenon according to buddhist philosophy these are first one impermanence second suffering and third non self everything has its origination as well as cessation the clinging to the sustenance of phenomena is a kind of suffering in buddhism it is not praised especially if it is connected with the worldly material things sustainable development for buddhists implies rather an inner spiritual quality which has to be realized by ongoing practices of virtues wisdom and meditation to achieve this the buddhist economic practice which is based on the virtues of the philosophy of the teachings of buddhism is very suitable it aims at minimize our sufferings the simplification of desires the practice of non violence genuine care and generosity the natural resources is not a divine creation affected for the use of man and hence one should not consider that nature is meant solely for one's benefit instead men should accept the right of all other beings to live on earth man gets the opportunity of living on the earth only if there is a harmony among humans animals and as well as plant life the buddhist work uh, vanaroba sutta also focuses the attention on the importance of protection conservation and development it draws attention of uh, to such aspects as planting of trees forest orchards construction of bridges and houses supply of water etc all of which are at present projects undertaken at national and even global level environmental problems were not so rampant during the buddha's time hence this shows how futuristic 
is Buddha's approach regarding sustainability. Buddhist middle path balances both spirituality and materialism to lead a contented life on the principles of sharing and caring. Buddhist virtues, percepts and the principles focus on establishing peace and harmony through spiritual and socio-economic development in the society. The virtue uh, regulates the behavior, strengthens the meditation, in turn develops wisdom. Buddha, with a great compassion for the world, required his followers to practice the four bounded states, loving kindness or metta, compassion or karuna, sympathetic joy or mutida, and equanimity or ubeksha. This practice of metta of universal love begins by suffering one's own mind with the universal love or metta and then pervading it to one's family, then to the neighbors, then to the village, then to the country and for the four corners of this universe. Non-violence is a fundamental tenet of universe, uh, Buddhism. Ahimsa promotes non-harmoning attitude to fellow human beings and ecosystem. Reverence for all forms of life is a crucial practical virtue in this tenet. Gentleness in all actions of body, speech and mind creates a healthy cultural religious value that celebrates sustainable environment. The ethical teachings of Buddhism ask us to purify the mind to control our desire. It observes that being greedy Human beings want to take as much as they can from the earth and from others to satisfy their immediate wants about the consideration of the future, without consideration of the future. Any kind of devaluation of other creatures and rating them in lower levels than human beings empathetically disconnect us from the harmonious principle of nature and lead us to harm to others as well as to ourselves. Buddhism has the potential to link sustainable development at all levels, individual, national and global. A beginning can be made from anywhere. It also provides a reason why doing so will only make the world better but also man happier. Natural resources are finite. The environment gives us all the basic services for free of charge without which our species cannot survive. Therefore, we should think of sustainable development. It is our fundamental duty to preserve it so that we can hand over our generation a green and a clean earth. Our duty to request everyone is that come forward to save this planet earth and to develop the society and mankind in a sustainable way. Buddhism offers as a range of powerful concepts of protection of long-term future through such principles as interdependence, universalism, moderation, trusteeship, environmental protection, environmental education, sustainable development, and consciousness of the right to the future generations. Since 1970s, there has been a growing movement in many parts of the world what is popularly known as Buddhist ecology, Buddhist environmentalism, eco-Buddhism or green Buddhism. This movement applies the concepts of the, and principles from Buddhism for dealing with particular uh, environmental issues in order to relieve the sufferings of all living beings. It is still not too late for all religions, all strata of the society and all uh, nations to come together jointly participate in the protection of the environment for living species based on the harmonious model which Buddhism always advocates. Thank you very much.